Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Blue Smooth Radio, and we're here on a Thursday evening in Blairick Vendo, and we got Malfoot Milligan. Yes. As our guest in our show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's the, the end of our short tour you're doing now in Holland to promote the, la the latest album. How was it so far? You know what, man? It's, it's been unexpectedly well attended, sold out shows, people listen to the music. I've just been blown away. It's probably one of the more successful tours I've been on. You know, and great venues, great people. Just I'm having a I'm having a great time, but I'm old, so it hurts. But I'm good. <laughs> but I'm good. <laughs> well, I guess you're not old. You, it looks easy. It's it's traveling um, a drag, is it? Make it oh no, it's not. You know, to be honest with you, I like to be I like to be on the road. It's always something I've enjoyed. You know, and it's not a drag because Holland is only three hours long. Like yeah. you ever travel in Texas? Yeah. Yeah. So to get out of Texas, it takes 10 hours, you know, so when I get like a two hour drive or an hour drive, 45 minute drive, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's Thank easy. You. Um, you released the CD, Jack is, uh, if you have certain in the background. Yeah, Jack no, on no, Royal Family Records. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's well received. I know, I've been really amazed at that. Because, you know, one of the things about doing music, it's like, it's easy for me to like something I do or to think it's good, but I'm in a bubble. So you never know how it's going to be received until you let it go. And it takes on a life of its own, you know. Well, that's that's one of the questions. If you create an album, um, first you have to work on the lyrics, the music. Yeah. One of the most, my questions always, which comes first, the chicken or the egg, the lyrics of the music? Sometimes the lyric and sometimes the music. Uh, life will humble you. I had this this thing in my head. I walked in with Jack, and I, you know I had the chorus in my head. And so uh, I said, "I'm gonna write a life. I'm gonna write a song called Life Will Humble You." And uh, he said, "Okay, what is it about?" I go, "Getting old." He goes, "I don't want to write that. <laughs> I don't write about getting old." I'm like, no, brother. You know it happens to the best of us. So let's write the tune. And so we did. So it came in like that. Came in with a chorus. Uh, then we started doing the verses and stuff, and it, it went by pretty fast, actually. Maybe you know? for our listeners, I mean, we know Jack lives in Austin. Jack, Jack Hustings, he he lives in and out of Austin. Yeah, that's for his the most part home. of the year. Yeah, and, and Eindhoven. That's your home base, Austin. You know, it was. Isn't most I just them. moved to Wichita Falls because I just got married, and so okay. I just got yeah, I got married about uh, eight weeks ago, and okay. so I get married and leave my wife. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that smart? That's really smart for a marriage. I don't know your wife, so I can't give you a straight answer to that. <laughs> she's a, well, she's a kind woman to let me go. She has to be, but I guess if you marry a singer on the road, you you know what you're getting into. I, to some degree, I think she does. She's a visual artist, and okay. she's a, she actually sells her work. And she has a, another job. She's a, a girl Friday for uh, Will Tucker. He's a uh, uh, He works in the oil and, oil and gas industry. So she's got a job. I'm I'm just kind of hoping that I have a good year. <laughs> we'll talk about life will humble you um, about getting old. There. Um, yes. But first, <laughs> your own words, word. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> What do I? Say? There was a beginning for Malfoy Milligan. Which triggered you in the music? You know what? I wanted people to accept me for who I was. I wanted to see me for the first time. Uh, I'm a black albino. Um, and back in the day, I had, you know, dreadlocks and all kinds of stuff. So people would look at me really funny. And so I'm a Buddhist. And so that is one of the things that Buddhism may say is the inside is reflected from the outside. You know, so what is happening in here is going on on the outside, too. Okay. It's a reflection. So when I changed my perception about myself through Buddhism, I started singing and people started to dig what I was doing. I was amazed, you know, and I still am because, you know, people, you have a great voice. When did you know you could sing? I'm like, I didn't. I never knew. I know. I don't know today. I don't know if I could sing today. We'll see. Yeah. You know? Well, you get. You, you But that get. was that was the main reason for it. I wanted to gain. It. It's it's a great way. Music is a great way to touch people. It's 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 a great. You know, it's just a great way to do it, without you know, without overbearing them or you know, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Was it rough in the beginning in the, in the South? You were born yeah, in of Taylor, Texas. Yeah. In the 60s, being a black albino or being black in the South, uh, in the 60s, it was tough. If you were black, you couldn't look white people in the eye. We were still under segregation. We were going to, uh, you know, going to white-only white bathrooms or, or black bathrooms or 
uh, uh, white water fountains, black water fountains, all that kind of stuff. Even the theater was separated. You know, it was segregated. So yeah, those were tough times. Yeah, you know, they're very tough times to be to be black in America, and then to be a minority within a minority was yeah. really tough. You know, I, I did another interview with the guy who wrote um, some kind of wonderful, mm -hmm. and he one of the reasons he got into music was to show the people that he could do something, that he could tr contribute yeah. as an artist. Yes. and then he he laid it on an extra buck on the, to to prove the people that. Yeah. So, I can't say it's a good thing, but it uh, it drove him. Yeah. You know what? Any motivation that turns into something positive is a good thing. Even if at, at the beginning the motivation is negative. Uh, it's You do it long enough and it turns into something positive. I've been singing for about 30 years now. And so, I sing from a different place. I don't sing from a place of anger or, or rage or like I did before. One of the great things about doing music was that I could walk on stage and scream and nobody would tell me to shut up. So now when I sing, it's from a different place. It's a, definitely more philosophical, definitely more love oriented, more, you know, more people friendly, I think. So you're, um, you're not as eager because I saw videos on it where you were on big stages and yeah. I was a pretty small club, but the motivation is still the same if you come up. It doesn't up. matter who I'm playing for, if it's one or two thousand people. Up. I played for 25,000 before. You know, then, doesn't matter. The coming season, uh, so I've heard you become one of the main singers in the Johan Derrick's uh, Blues Alive tour. Yes. Uh, what do you Which expect I'm about it? I'm to, he, you know what, he gave, I really believe that one of the reasons this tour is successful is, uh, you know, Jack and I were on, on his show and uh, people saw us. And so, oh, absolutely. So that re I think that really helped us out a great deal. And I'm looking forward to doing the tour. I mean, he's a great guy. He's a great music guy. Uh, you he's know, absolutely and a great I'm, music lover, and he has the power of uh, that a lot of people see him. And, and yeah, see him. man, he does. And to, and to be able to share that with us, and to bring that out, and, and share us with people, that's a big deal. Is there a message you want to bring across if you're on stage? Peace, and love, and happiness. Is. Happiness being the first one. Yeah? Yeah. If you're happy, you don't mess with other people. If you're, if you're satisfied, you're not mad at anybody else. If you wake up unhappy in the morning, it's, it's just a bad scene altogether. So my job when I do music is not just to be self-fulfilled, but to fulfill the audience and take them out of their, 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 their job for a small amount of time, for two hours. Their job, their, their wages, their extra kids, their wife's divorce. I get to take them out of all of that. And I love it. We got dreams to remember. I know, see, they don't need me. <laughs> Well, I guess it's another ballpark if you if you stop there. If you if you're singing, do you um, keep special care of your voice? Yeah, I take uh, I got sleep. Uh, I lose, I do like to drink a little cabossier before I, I get started. What, which which uh, it's a cognac. Oh, I thought you said Jaeger. Hey, no, no. <laughs> a little cabossier. Oh, cabossier. Okay. or oh, any kind of cognac. Yeah, yeah, you uh, know. Mm. Uh, otherwise, I don't do anything really special. Just you know, you know, yeah, take some some ibuprofen anti-inflammatory so I can keep my vocal cords down a little bit. But that's it. It comes so natural. That that's the. I guess so. You know, I don't think about it that much. I try not to. Once I started thinking about it, then it's taken me out of the song. And the song is King, Emperor, and Queen. It's all about the song and giving that to people. And that's what's so great about this band is that everybody's on, in the, on the same wavelength. You know, they are, everybody's egos are out of the way when it comes to playing this song. That could be a, could be a name of a song. <laughs> King Emperor Queen. <laughs> okay, I'll see what I can do for the next hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any specific lyrics on, let's say, the last CD you made that you're really proud of that you got them on, on the record? You know what? I, I'm yeah. proud of the fact that this is a more intimate record. Yeah. This CD is definitely more intimate and more. Uh, it's more. It's a, again. It's about turning 60. I turned 60 in, a, in uh, about uh, three weeks. And for me, it's about my life struggles going up until that. Love, loss. Uh, Jack and I have both gone through long-term relationships that have been ended. So we're at the same spot, and we're writing about that. But it's not. People say it sounds a little. Uh, a little dark, 
And I said, you know what, man? It's full of hope, though. It's always full of hope. It's not just, you know, it's not a CD just full of darkness. No, it's, it's not only blues. It's, it's, it's soul, it's funk. It's oh, yeah, man. A little country it thrown in there. Yeah. yeah, a little, everything stuffed in there. We need you a few minutes for sound checks. Man, I got to finish this. I really do. A couple of minutes is there. Uh, yeah, I'll be at that in a second. We got there. All, all right. enough. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, that question is already asked. Really. Um, are there any things you, you want to achieve yourself that you have set goals for yourself in the near future? You said that's one thing I would like. I just like. want to keep working. You know, play big to bigger audiences if I can. Uh, write good music before I die. Play some of the. And it's not even about the venue. People always ask me, "What's your favorite venue?" Uh, uh, and my favorite venue is where people show up. <laughs> you know, that's that's my favorite venue. I, I can I can figure that, yeah. Yeah, we, we that's what I want to say. It's about blues. Blues is always about hope, not yeah. about the hardships. Yeah. It's the hardships of life but the hope of of it getting better. Yeah. yeah. I think we know won't leave you alone for your uh, Sound check. All right. Thank you, David. So far, this now we we have, we're gonna make a great show about. Oh this man, time. thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I got uh, small, small.